Now, Max Verstappen and Carlos Sainz raced together for only 23 Grand Prix, but the relationship has been labelled toxic. The verdict was made public by Red Bull advisor Dr. Helmut Marco, who's heavily involved in the hiring and firing of drivers at Toro Rosso and Red Bull. Marco took a big risk in 2015 by pairing the two rookies, Verstappen's and Sainz, who both had a lot to prove as the sons of former drivers. Verstappen entered F1 at the age of 17, while Sainz was only 20 at the time, but Marco believes it was a combustible partnership that exploded in the wrong way. It was his science's bad luck to get Max as a teammate. The atmosphere between the two at Toro Rosso was quite toxic. In the setup we had at the time, I couldn't see a way of keeping him with us and so he moved to Renault, McLaren and then on to Ferrari. Verstappen was promoted to Red Bull over signs in early 2016, after the team decided to demote the underperforming Danny Kvyat. Signs moved to Renault near the end of 2017 after his path to Red Bull was blocked by the Verstappen-Daniel Ricciardo lineup. Marco believes the Spanish driver struggled at Toro Rosso at first because of his father's legend and his world rallying exploits. For a long time, he lived in the shadow of his father, the two-time world rallying champion. He was unfairly saddled with the image of being the spoiled son of a racing driver, whereas on the contrary, Carlos had to fight consistently to get ahead. Now, when Verstappen was promoted to Red Bull at the age of 18, there was consternation in the paddock, with some bullying signs had been overlooked. But Marco believes their decision was justified because Verstappen was the quicker driver, winning his first race at the 2016 Spanish Grand Prix. There was an outcry because some felt Carlos had been overlooked. His development was also very good and the difference between the two was often very minimal. But despite having less experience, Max was the faster driver, hence our decision to move him to Red Bull Racing. So, despite all of the events and Marco's words pointing to one thing, Carlos Sainz himself maintains that rumours of animosity between them have been exaggerated to an extent he doesn't fully comprehend. It's one of the enigmas of the paddock. Everyone thinks me and Max hate each other and that's absolutely not the case. Many fans, when I go to autograph signings, they keep asking me about Max and what's the relationship. Even my friends keep asking me about Max and the relationship we had. We were having fun that year, I promise. We had a lot of fun out on the track. In the track, we were extremely competitive. We knew we were battling for our careers, for our Formula 1 pedigree in our first year, rookie season, and I got on him with a lot better than what people think. Speaking to Tom Clarkson on the official F1 podcast Beyond the Grid, Sainz was unequivocal about his former teammate's talent behind the wheel, even admitting that it pushed him to step up his own game. But he admits that it still hurt when Dr. Helmut Marko chose Verstappen to replace a struggling Kvyat in the senior Red Bull team in 2016. For me, Max, there's no doubt that he's one of the most talented, if not the most talented guys that I've battled against in Formula 1. So I really enjoy that year because it also forced me to take another step. I thought I was extremely good after 2014, after the year I did, then I arrived in Formula 1 and I'm up against a young guy with a lot of talent. So it made me do another step of commitment, of professionalism, of talent, of everything. So it made me a better driver in the end. It was a big blow when Max got promoted to Red Bull at the 2016 Spanish Grand Prix. I always had in mind that Red Bull really wanted the Max Verstappen phenomenon to go to Red Bull as soon as possible, and I always thought that he obviously deserved it. But I also felt that I deserved it at the same time, because I felt I was not getting outperformed or beaten that often for there to be a very clear cut between him and me. Fortunately for Sainz, however, revenge for being passed over came along pretty quickly. I remember that exact weekend, Max won the race, but at the same time I was starting 9th and after lap 1 I was P3 right behind him in a Toro Rosso, and that felt really good. Ricardo was leading after lap 1 when the two Mercedes crashed, then it was Max and then it was me, and I was like, hey, here I am helmet with the Toro Rosso, still P3 behind Max like in the Toro Rosso days, so I'm going for it. Now, to be fair, Sainz has come a long way since then. The Spaniard, like his ex-teammate Verstappen, has cemented himself as a force to be reckoned with and is now one of the most sought-after drivers on the grid. That sentiment was reinforced at the British Grand Prix in Silverstone, where Sainz took his maiden victory in a race full of amazing and intense moments. Nonetheless, the Spaniard is not in the mood to celebrate right now. After winning his first F1 race at Silverstone, he appeared to be on track for a second place at the Austrian Grand Prix, but a power unit issue ended his race early. And with reliability issues and strategic errors hampering Ferrari's championship bid thus far this season, F1 commentator Martin Brundle is concerned that fans will be denied a season-long title race. 
Max calmly and skillfully leads the championship by 38 points over Charles. That could have been so different if Ferrari had been more reliable, such as in Spain and Azerbaijan, or sharper on strategy, such as in Monaco and Britain. Max, of course, has had two retirements in the first three races, but Leclerc's pace throughout has been deeply impressive. And if you wear a neutral F1 cap, we are so far being denied another cliffhanger of a championship. So, with Leclerc's victory in Austria, the Monegas driver now leads his teammate by 37 points in the driver's standings. Max Verstappen is still 38 points ahead of Leclerc's in the Drivers' Championship, and the two appear to be the favourites to contest the 2022 Drivers' Championship. With half of the season completed, and Red Bull seemingly on top of their own reliability dramas from early in the year, Brundle believes Leclerc's points advantage over signs may result in him being given priority in the championship soon. The Ferrari is fragile, and Sainz's power unit blowout was bodywork shattering, followed by a very expensive fire in this cost cap era. Fresh from his inaugural victory at Silverstone, Sainz was absolutely gutted, a guaranteed at least second place gone up in smoke. As we move into the second half of the season, the trailing Ferrari team must be close to calling off the battle between their two drivers, and he'll be aware of this. It was a very painful and sad moment for him championship-wise. So, if we've learned anything this season, it's that development is king and the development paths taken by Ferrari and Red Bull remain very different, even opposite in some ways. However, Ferrari has largely stuck to its concept, making only minor changes to reduce drag with updates. Ferrari has tried to reduce drag by slightly increasing the undercut in the underside of the side pods in a package introduced at Silverstone, in addition to the rear wing introduced in Canada and later used in both Silverstone and Austria. Ferrari's only shortcoming is the power unit's reliability. Because of the less dense air at altitude, Austria was a very demanding Grand Prix for engine cooling. We don't know what happened to Sainz's V6, but Ferrari team principal Mattia Bonotto believes it was a similar failure to the one Leclerc experienced in Baku. Sainz will almost certainly face a penalty for using a fourth power unit at this weekend's French Grand Prix, but so far Binotto has been evasive, despite the fact that Ferrari clearly has issues in this area. Ferrari used the more closed engine cover introduced at Silverstone to reduce drag in Austria once more. Given the small opening around the exhaust, this certainly reduced heat dissipation. To avoid overheating, the cooling openings on the sides of the F175 in Austria had been widened. Ferrari recognises that finishing the season without two new power units for Leclerc and Sainz will be difficult. Red Bull still has some issues on this front, but they're less serious and concerning than Ferrari's. The floor is the most important aerodynamic element in this new generation of ground effect F1 cars, capable of generating much of the overall downforce while generating very little drag. Red Bull had already revisited this area with changes implemented in Azerbaijan last month, moving the entrances back to raise the large upper lip to increase airflow. This came at the cost of a minor increase in drag. Despite ongoing improvements to the RB18, there has been little change in the relative performance of Red Bull and Ferrari, though Austria was Red Bull's biggest flop of the season in terms of pace. After Sainz's retirement, Verstappen's second place and fastest lap at least limited the damage. While Red Bull continues to push new parts, Ferrari has made relatively minor changes to the concept it began the year with, addressing some of its issues. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel, and don't forget to click the bell button to be notified of future videos.